Hey everybody, this is Day Trader Rockstar, and this is the High Probability Watch List for the week of March 7th. March 7th, it's Friday once again. Look at this market go. Paul's on the mic. I get uh, an early start. Um, we had a nice little falling wedge pattern. It was, uh, and uh, we had a nice break out of it, measured move up here. We didn't even hold back, and we popped even further. We came back. Remember we, earlier this week, I was banging the table on this rising wedge pattern and said, we're going to break out of this to the upside. And we had the jobs, jobs report out this morning, which helped, helped us get through that level. Then we pulled all the way back, but this market is unstoppable to the upside. And I've been telling everyone, I said, be careful in the shorts. Do not try to short this market. Not yet. Uh, we want to get back above 2,000. We want to really get up into that 220 area. That would be the, the area I would like to uh, see to put on some hedges. But right now, you know, we're just going to ride this up. We've been trading great. The Micron here over $12, $12.20. That was our target. We crushed it on uh, Budweiser, uh, Yum Brands, CS, CTX. We're going to go over those now because these are all the type of setups we want to continue to bring to you. I want to continue to search out and find before they start moving. Get in. And in this five-day period that we have between Monday and Friday, I want to see these things aggressively moving. Uh, and that's what the HPS setups uh, are about. So the first thing we want to do is just, wow, I, may, I already started my work, research yesterday. So I already got the list in front of me. I got the golden list right here. I don't know if I should go over these. We have to actually review the ones that are moving, make sure we're going to continue to hold on to these. Um, I um, added a couple new positions today. Uh, added to my Gilead, so we'll talk about that. Added, uh, we sold the, the rest of my HP. We sold the Budweiser today. Beautiful. I uh, I got, I rolled over, you know, moved my uh, Micron back to April 15. Still expecting this to get up to $13 and possibly even higher. So there's a lot of things here that, uh, you know, moving and grooving in the market here. Pushing right back up very close to the highs and back up to 2,000. We're running into problems right now. But this is uh, this is a video that I'm starting here at about 11, 11, 11 o'clock. So the day's far from over. We can end up lower. We can end up higher. Um, but I am in uh, full research mode right now. I'm not doing any trading today other than picking up some swings and doing the uh, you know doing the stocks i haven't taken any es trades I haven't even been paying attention to the rambot too much because it's just there's a lot of work i have to do uh so let's let's start off um first thing i want to do is actually go back and take a look at the current hps watch list because that is um that is what a lot of things are running off of and i just want to go back and uh we'll start with that now, as you can see, this is on the top of your dashboard. If you're a newer, newer uh, member out there and you're not familiar with the HPS, that is a uh, our stock section and what we like to trade. So this is the HPS site. And that, you can find that to the t on the top of your dashboard. It's called your HPS uh, list. And then your HPS video goes along with that. That's the video that I'm recording right now and talking to you on. So I uh, just added Monsanto um, into the list for next week. But there is still some downside. We're going to go over this. But let's take a look at some of that already moved out. And we've already uh, taken these great trades. So we're going to start off with the uh, Seagate. And as you can see, I want to just go back um, and describe what got me into these trades. And uh, you know, kind of explain that's the type of trades we're going to continue to look for. And the education that goes along with the process is very important. So this is a HPS setup. It's usually... A stock down into twenty dollar range, I don't pay attention to. But what we notice here, and I'm going to try to zoom out here. I have to fix this a second. Hold on. Now, as you see, Seagate here was a, a nice channel. I'm going to push all the way back here, and you can see this channel was uh, defined here. Whenever we have a defined channel, I call it a one, two, three pattern, and we break out of it. Um, quality name is important to make sure that uh, you're in a stock that you're familiar with and that uh, you understand that does move around. It's not that stock that's just going to go from 100 to 0 <laughs> and bankrupt. You get down to a certain level and you start to see things that we no notice, the divergences. Um, you know. But the important thing here with the strategy here is when we break down through a channel slightly or even a, a more aggressively and we push back into it, we look, to f look for the market to hold that. Once we start to hold that channel, it continues to be another opportunity, just like the first test. So seeing that reversal candle, seeing the higher lows, and we see this starting to cross over, this is what has gotten me into that trade, and it was one of the best bets going into next week. And now as we finish off the week, you can see we've just hit our targets, and uh, 
and it's just a fantastic trade. I mean, this is what HPS is about. We want to be able to not get, get not get involved with all this chop, but understand where the highest probability moves are going to be and get in it and take it uh, as fast as we can and uh, as best we can. This might even continue higher, but this is, you know, this is the style and this is, you know, gives, gives you the alerts when a, um, a trigger has been hit, so you're able to manage your position. So great setup on Seagate. And I still expect it to go higher. You know, I, I, you know, there is something about the Seagate I expect um, to be get some news out there. So if you're in it or continue to look, it looks pretty good. This channel will probably eventually break out to the upside. Now, market here continue to rip. I don't know if you can hear those crickets in the background, but it is uh, it's just on a mission right now. And we're at the highs of the session here, 202. So let's go to the next HBS setup. Here is Whole Food Mart, and again. Um, we started to see a nice base here, and I've been in this stock multiple times back here. We had a nice pop on it. Uh, we got out real fast, and it's come back down here. Um, and um, let me see where we had this. Oh, this was uh, an old trade, but here was the buy trigger, the 3052. We wanted to buy it on onto uh, into strength. And it said we did pop through this. We didn't get up to our our trigger uh, our profit zone yet, but you know, fantastic setup here. It continues to move higher. I think we're going to eventually hit our target on this. Um, and it's still active. Still active on this. All right. Our next uh, setup here is Celgene. And, and, you know, this is um, going into going into next week. Uh, the biotechs and drugs will be in focus for me. Now, they haven't run a, They haven't um, moved with the market aggressively. It's, there's an overhanging tension in a lot of these but with the ongoing... Uh, election process and you know Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders and a lot of talk of real and in the drug companies and the companies that are tr tr you know um, have their drugs at uh, really extreme prices and it's just like a witch hunt against these so these have been uh, been pressured you know the cell genes the Gileads uh, you know a lot of different stocks but still you know the patterns play out and these are not going away so we recognize some of the opportunities here and what I'm Seeing here is this channel within a channel. I just like the opportunity here. We have a divergence here. You see that low and the lower low and the higher low here. And right at this point here, this we're trying to turn back up. And we might pull back a little into this uh, pattern a bit before breaking higher. It's going to be a tough call. There's not a big, it's a very tight stop. Um, but I like the odds on this. And even though if it does get stopped, you know, if it does hit its stop here, I'm, you know, because I have the options in here. Um, it's kind of my set, you know, when I do get into options and calls and puts and stuff, th th those are, uh, you know, those are usually my, um, my stops and stuff. I, I trade those, I get nice, uh, you know, I should say, uh, you know, cheaper options. So, you know, in the long run, those options, if they just fail, that's really my stop versus, you know, a very inexpensive option, and if it's not working out, I'll just I'll take it off. But you can see it's it's chopping around. We're in the buy zone right here. I like this area a lot. I do like this area a lot. I continue to uh, hold on to this. And uh, Gilead here is another one that's uh, popping. But you can see it's still in the play. I still like it a lot. Now here was the alert on Budweiser. Now I said there was two two possible uh, scenarios playing out on uh, on Budweiser. So on Monday we took this trade here. Even though I put the alert underneath this, just in case we got down there, but I wanted to start the position off on this one, two, three pattern. You can see the pivot up here, the pivot here, uh, the pivot here, this nice little candle right here, and then we can, we're right down on this. So there's a possibility we could actually get a nice bounce there. I think we were kind of, um, you know, looking at that. So I ended up getting in our position there, and you could see we actually uh, moved down a little, but now this is where we are. We just took profits now, so. Um, you had to take profits on this gap up today. It's still looking very strong, and you know what? The 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 setup is still there, but truth is, I would use this uh, retracement, first retracement trend line down here as a, probably a better entry. I'm not going to set this one up. I mean, it's out of our range right now. We had a great profit on it. A lot of people profited in the room. I saw people taking profits on it today, so congratulations. It worked out great. Um, another one, two, three pattern. And the combination of things are just lining up, and it looked like it was a, a divergence too that was setting up. Let me get a qual. Let me just make sure. Yeah, it was a pretty good divergence too. I'll move this over here. You could, 
Now, when we look at the stochastics like we're, we're doing right now, we notice that there's two lines. There's the percentage K line and the, the percentage D line, which is the blue and red line. Uh, percentage D is the moving is a smoothing factor, a moving average that goes against the percentage K. So it kind of smooths it out. And that's the one I use for my signal line. So when I look for divergences, I am looking for that low here and that higher low on that blue line. Sometimes the red line will come back down, but I, I tend to kind of um, sometimes block that red one out um, just to make it easier to identify the divergence. And sometimes you'll just see one line on mine where people are familiar with two lines on the stochastics, but because when the stochastics were uh, developed, I mean, some people used a crossover as a, as a signal or a trigger. I preferred to just use the divergence and the other multiple indicators that line up at the same time. So this was a perfect, perfect setup on the trend line, uh, the balance, everything. Again, we took profits on it today, so congratulations. All right, here we have AMT, and this is sometimes happens on the HPS watch list. We'll have, I tend to try to give you the best entry possible, so we look for a little pullback. In some cases, uh, at the beginning of that day, remember this goes out Friday, so Mondays is when these things to hack, uh, uh, um, excuse me, activate. And if we closed high and I was looking for a pullback, in some cases we don't even get that pullback. It still does, it makes it a great trade, but we don't get the signal uh, for the entry. This one continues to say watching, and I'll show you why, because we gapped up and we just took off. So we didn't get our, our you know, it didn't get any pullback. It just ran from this position. It was a great setup. I didn't uh, take it because I didn't get the signal, but uh, maybe someone took it out there because they liked the uh, overall setup. Um, it's a channel within a channel. It already started running. Um, you know, great setup, but uh, it's it's now past its prime, and we'll move on from that one. Now I did have a short on the day on the week. I did take a short in the uh, KMB short. I took uh, the puts, uh, the 220 puts. And um, it was off base off of this pullback right here, this big candle. And it actually pulled back a little and then started moving back up very strong. It did pull back. It did hit its uh, target real fast uh, on a gap down. Um, so it's a, you know, would have uh, worked out if you did take profits. I'm actually still holding the short. I expect this maybe to rotate back down, but a very hard short in this environment. So I, I stress it. This is the only short I have. I actually have... A couple of spy call uh, puts that I bought a couple of weeks ago just to kind of hedge, but not nothing's uh, nothing. There's not a uh, anything I'm looking to short right now. Um, but this will play out, you know. I'll let this play out. It's looking okay. Um, it still could pull back. It actually did hit its target. So in reality, it did hit its target. It did, um, you know, get some nice follow through too. So it did move down about two points off of this. I don't think it hit the 28 zone, though. Um, actually, that should be 28. So it's, you know, it's not the uh, 29, I said, but 28. I'm just going to review the uh, Darden, even though we've taken this one off. And it's the second week I left the chart up here because it was such a good one. I expected some big movement on it. And this is what we call a, uh, a trend line retracement, but also an X marks the spot, the combination of that rising trend line, the retracement trend line, the reversal candle, everything here lined up here. You know, and again, when we get into these, you got to prepare yourself for a rocket ship. Take a look at this. Boom. You know, we rode that all the way back up, and we took great profits on that. The same thing with the Brinker, EAT. Um, worked out great. I'm also going to review some of the older ones here just because they're so important that these divergents that are working out have been just uh, perfect. And here's, uh, here's American Express. You could actually see the move off of this. Look at that, look at where it is today. I mean, these are stocks and how this works out. Every week we set up the HPS watch list. These are stocks that are based off of uh, multiple indicators and a methodology that's been developed over years of trading. And it's really you know understanding the uh, the right time to get into a stock based off of certain things. You know, even down to the candlestick. And certain things you start to weed out, things that uh, don't work out all the time or don't work out as random, but things that work out all the time or close to that. And you might say that that's impossible, but you know what? This is uh, this is the best you're going to ever see. You know, you're not going to get better than this. That's why I'm so passionate and so sometimes so so uh, 
excited about it because you won't get anything better than this. All you have to do is now develop your discipline, patience <clears throat> around um, your method. You know, it's, it's the weak link is your emotions when you trade like this. It's your weak link, you know, being impatient, being greedy, being in, being in a trade too too long or taking a trade out of boredom or getting out of a trade because of fear. Um, you know, these all emotions are going to affect your trade. But when you look back and we take a look at why a stock is moving and we see the, uh, the, the, uh, the continued correlation between certain things that, that represent HPS, then we continue to look for those and we tighten that up even more. And now we're down to a level on the HPS that we only want to bring these setups. So that's why sometimes you might not get a, a you know, a 10 stock list going into a Friday because maybe there's not 10 stocks setting up. Maybe we're all extended. Like a lot of stocks this week are very extended. I mean, I have a good setups for next week, but this is important to recognize what we look for. And sometimes we only get these at certain levels. That's why we have to recognize it. Always do our research, find them, and then strike hard when that happens. So this is another great example. And here's a great example of Cabela's. And Cabela's is a stock we've been trading. And, you know, we just wait for the, the setups. Each, t you know, these are the recent buy zones. Here was a buy zone, profit zone. Here was a buy trigger, profit zone. You can see how we moved up, but we wait for the, per the perfect level. Here was another one. This is one of the greatest. The buy zone was way down here. We gapped down on some earnings and we pulled back right into our buy area, uh, right on the trend line. And it ripped right back up the following day. We got out of it. And, uh, you know, we traded it since then a couple times. But this is the latest alert that just went out a couple weeks ago. Um, based off of, of course, what do you see here? The low. Move this over a little. <clears throat> the low, the higher low, the low, the lower low. What's the results after a divergence like that? Psh, craziness. That's what's, that's perfect. So again, uh, you know, you can't be uh, any more excited about what's going to happen going, going into the future here at Day Trading Radio. Um, you know, very excited about this stuff. I want to go back to Celgene here for a second because that's starting to turn back up. We watched um, reversal on Gilead today, pushed up higher. Now Celgene here, and it's just a matter of time. I wasn't worried about it at all. If you look at, the, you know, the map here, this is kind of the, the map, and this is our, our um, terrain and stuff and the, the path that the stock has taken. We got back into an oversold level, and it makes sense to start to see that push higher. And the, the main set up here was that consolidation divergence so we ha we take it down to the daily find that bigger daily pattern understand that 60 minute time frame is going to rotate inside that and you know very interesting to see this rotate up rotate down oversold overbought oversold starting to move back up this won't you know this will either break higher break lower and uh right now we're starting to push back up we like to, you know, develop a good divergence here, which did already give us the site to move up. And but the only thing about, you know, Celgene and drugs is the possibility of news. So I just kind of lay that out there. I still uh, very aggressively uh, liking these a lot going into next week. So here's the other uh, recent HPS setup, and I already triggered that, but that was a, a divergence, right? A slight divergence that happened right at this point on our buys. And again, all these stocks have moved up and rotated back up. So this is real time right now. Uh, this one has a combination of the one, two, three pattern and divergence. Um, just, you know, just what we want to see. This is what we wait for. Days like, the, the months and weeks like this when you have, lots of times you'll be, you know, in a, in a zone. I'm, I go through 200, 300 stocks uh, just on my own watch list. And then I go through some visual scans on Finviz and I'm doing some, uh, some pattern scans and I'm just going through everything. So if I don't see it and there's nothing there, um, you know, like I said, I don't want to bring you something and just say, well, this is what I want to try to do. You know, I want to say, hey, you know, I'm banging the table on this because this is that setup. And a great example, and I just have to go back one more time and show, just show you this great example today is, uh, you know, yesterday doubling down on Joe, a stock that, you know, a lot of people are like, what, that's an ETF on coffee? How do you trade that? Well, you know, trade it just like a stock. But what it gave us was that perfect divergence right here. And I called that divergence. I noticed it. We got in it, and then I added to it, and then it, you know, added to it yesterday just because of the divergence. It gapped up. It continues to run. Um, I expect this to actually break out of this channel. Divergences typically get us out of these channels. So it's, uh, 
here's here's uh, another, another nice divergence back here, and you get much bigger moves on the divergences. So I don't think this move is even near being uh, over with. So I'm excited about that, and just excited about finding the next uh, next great setups for you. I'm not going to go through all these. All these are are on here. I want to just emphasize how important it is to look for these HPS patterns and um, understand. But I want to leave these up here for another week or more, and then we're going to archive them and uh, let the next ones just kind of set up here. But just so you can go by, this is, these are great examples of dis different patterns and different HPS setups. So I think it's good education. So if you want to go back here, just revisit it one last time this week. I'll keep it on. I'll keep it on the screen so you can go back. You just click on the chart and you know this here's here's the brinker one <clears throat> the uh, brinker here you could see um, best bet of the week great HBS with DDRI this was a couple weeks ago this was the best bet of the week and again we break out of the channel line come back to it hold it with the candlestick and then boom Boom goes the dynamite, and um, well, perfect. So let's take a look one more time at the S&P before I start the HPS watch list for this week. And we've already gone over a lot of the stuff. And again, it's not going to be as gr you know I should say not as great. It's going to be as great, but it's not as probably going to be as many as we've been having setting up because a lot of these stocks are now ex extended and overbought. Now. <laughs> Believe it or not, I think they're going higher. So a lot of these things I'm trying to roll out, you know, getting into um, getting taking the profits on the uh, options and getting close to expiration. And then, um, um, you know, kind of just uh, rolling them over to later months. So, uh, you know, some of these are still really good. The S&P in itself, we're looking for a move above 2000 to get between 2010 and 2020. At that point, maybe we'll start looking at some hedges, but we still have to just wait for that signal. Now, we could actually, uh, we didn't see a divergence here, didn't see, but we started to see that 60-minute divergence, but that that got blown out of, the, out of the water. Well, still hasn't returned back to this high. It's going to be interesting to see how the end of the day plays out. It's 1.30 right now. I want to try to get some of these, um, try to get this, try to get this out before the end of the close. So, um, but, you know, personal feeling to feel like we have an opportunity to really squeeze higher. And um, even though we have the end of the day and end of the week, next week we start off. Um, if we kind of gapped up, I would want to be uh, really taking profits, taking profits, hands over, hand over fist. Um, KMB here in the corner of my eye actually popping here. Pretty nice pop here in KMB. So the market must be pushing up here a little bit higher. 